Welcome to SourceCAD. In this three-part video series, I will introduce you to the 3D tools of AutoCAD right from scratch. This tutorial series is for beginners who are completely new to AutoCAD 3D and have a basic knowledge of AutoCAD 2D tools. In this part one of three-part series, we will discuss the following topics. So we'll start with user interface and then we'll talk about navigation tools. Later, we'll also discuss about solid primitives, which are 3D solid models that can be created without using any 2D sketch. Then we'll talk about simple 3D modeling tools like extrude, press pull, revolve, sweep, and finally loft. So without any delay, let's get started with AutoCAD 3D user interface. When you launch AutoCAD for the very first time, this is the screen that you will usually see. Now we do have a start tab here, which is the tab that's going to list all the drawings that you have previously opened. Also some other options here, but I'm going to start with a blank drawing right here. Now let's explore the user interface before we discuss the basic tools. The very first thing that you need to do here is switch to 3D modeling environment. Right now we are in the 2D drafting workspace, which will let you make drawings for 2D and all the 2D tools are readily available here. So I'll go to this gear icon right here on the status bar, select and I'll select 3D modeling. Now we are in the 3D modeling workspace. And as you can see, the tools on this ribbon area are now 3D tools. So this entire area is called ribbon area and it is divided in a very logical way. So we have home tab, which contains all the frequently used 3D tools as well as some 2D tools. We have solid tab with frequently used solid modeling tools. We have surface tab with surfacing tools, mesh, mesh related tools, visualize, well, it contains tools related to 3D rendering and environment setting. And then we have the usual parametric insert and all the other tabs. Now I'll go to home tab and home tab is where you'll find all the most frequently used tools from all of these other tabs. For example, we have the solid tab with the solid tools. We also have the mesh tab. We have solid editing tools and we don't have any surface tool here because we can use it in a different way. Now here we have the drawing area. This is where the magic happens and everything you make in AutoCAD will show up right about here. Also, we have on the top right corner this view cube. Now this view cube is very essential for making 3D drawings and you need it for 3D drawing views. Now if you don't see this view cube, simply go to this minus icon here on the top left and select view cube. This should be checked. Also, we have a navigation bar. So make sure this is checked. And actually this thing is navigation bar. So make sure it is checked and the navigation bar will show up. Alternatively, you can go to view tab and activate view cube and navigation bar from here. We also have this UCS icon, which happens to be this one. It will show you X, Y, and Z axis. Currently we are in the 2D plane. So only we have X and Y. Z will show up in a moment when we explore the 3D environment. Now let's go to this material sample drawing. And all these drawings can be downloaded from link in the description. So whatever drawing I've used in this tutorial is available for download. Now this material sample drawing contains this kind of wireframe and actually we are in the 3D view. So X, Y and Z axis is visible. Now that's the usual case for 3D drawing. And now here you can see the view cube as well. It is showing you this 3D view. Now in this view cube, we have this home icon. Just click on it and it will take you to this southwest isometric direction, which is in between south and west and tilted to an angle of 30 degrees. If you click on any hotspot on this view cube, for example, top, it will take you to top view. If you click here, it will take you to this view and respectively, it will just move to whatever view you select. You can also shift the view by 90 degrees simply by clicking these arrows. It will just shift by 90 degrees and you can rotate by 90 degree in the current plane simply by selecting these arrows. To switch back to the default view, click on home. Now the visual style will control the way your drawing is displayed. Right now we are looking at this drawing in 2D wireframe visual style and the visual style option is on this view panel. That's right here. You can switch to different visual style like conceptual. It will show you your drawing in shaded view with the shadows. So you can see the direction of light as well as shadow. You can change it to hidden 
where hidden lines are not visible, realistic view where the materials of this object are also visible. So here as you can see materials are applied and it's clearly visible. We have simply the shaded view, the shaded with edges view, we have the shades of gray view, completely gray drawing with no material whatsoever. And then we have this sketchy view and we have wireframe. Now this wireframe is optimized for 3D. This 2D wireframe view is optimized for 2D. So this is the 3D wireframe view. And then finally X-ray view, which is kind of a translucent view where the materials are also visible, but you can also see through it. Now, Navigation tool is very important in 3D and to navigate in 3D, you just need to use a three button mouse. Now, if you have a three button mouse, simply press and hold your middle mouse wheel and this will let you pan your drawing like this. Also, if you press shift key and then press your middle mouse wheel, this will let you orbit your drawing. Now, this is like floating your drawing in the 3D environment. So wherever you move your mouse, your drawing will float like this. And you can see the view cube as well. It is just floating along with the drawing. Now you can also change this to an orbit called free orbit. Now to orbit your drawing freely in 3D space, press and hold control as well as shift key. So press both of these keys and now press your middle mouse wheel. And now what we have here is free orbit. So there is a difference between the usual orbit and free orbit. In this case, you can just orbit your drawing completely without any limitation. But in the usual orbit tool, it will stop at some point. For example, if I orbit it, it will just stop right about here. And now it won't orbit anymore. But with free orbit, well, you can orbit it even further. So that's the difference between free orbit and orbit. Now the same set of tools are also available here on the navigation bar. So we have the orbit tool, select and you can orbit your drawing. We have the free orbit right here. Well, you can freely orbit it. And of course we have the pan tool. You can just pan your drawing like this. Then we have the command line and the status bar toggle, which are really important things and you can just add any command using this command line and the status bar toggle is used for making drawings precisely and it has all the tools related to making drawings precisely and other tools as well. Now there are two kind of views in AutoCAD, a parallel and a perspective. Currently we are looking at this drawing in a parallel view. Let me show you what it is. So I'll go to this parallel and perspective drawing for that. And this is the parallel view where all the lines are parallel. So you can see well these two lines are parallel. So are these. So that's the usual view, but not the very realistic kind of view. If however, you right click on this view cube and switch to perspective, it will show you this view. Now here you can see that the face which is closer to you will appear larger and the one which is further away from you will appear well smaller and these two lines are no longer parallel so it is kind of the realistic view which you'll usually see in the real world that's the perspective view now perspective view is often not the best for working in autocad so when you are working with autocad 3d and if your drawing switches to this kind of perspective view just switch it back to parallel by right clicking on view cube and selecting parallel from this now let's talk about the solid primitives. So I'll go to this blank drawing and now we'll start making 3D drawing. To make 3D drawing, we don't always need sketches though usually we start with 2D sketch and then we convert it into 3D but using primitives you can directly start with 3D. In the modeling panel we have the primitive tools right here and these are all called solid primitives. Now before we begin making anything you need to switch to 3D view which you can do simply by clicking here on the home icon. Now we are in X, Y and Z view, which is the 3D view. Now click on this box primitive, click anywhere and that's the first point. Now you can see that we are making a rectangle. Click on the second point, that's the base and then add a height. So we have the very first cuboid. Now this is the 2D wireframe visual style. So you can change it to anything. In this case, I'll select shades of gray. There we are. Now you can see this clearly. You can also select other primitives like cylinder, where you can just start from a point, make the base and then add a height. And you can keep on making other primitives like so. So you can just make the base, now you can move it up or even down if you want. And rest are similar. You can also use proper distances if you don't want to use these random values. Let me show you how it works. So I'll go to box, I'll click at a point and now we want to specify a proper distance. For that I'll type at one comma let's say 1.5 comma 
3. Now we are using 1 as length which is along x axis, 1.5 width which is along y axis and 3 is the distance along z axis. So let's just press enter and this is what we have. 1 along x, that's this, 1.5 along y, that's this and 3 along z, that's the height. You can also use negative direction. For example, I'll go to cylinder, I'll click at a point and now I'll add a distance of 1 unit for the base radius. Now if you press simply plus 2 and press enter, it will just make it up but if you want to make it downwards, just type minus 2 or any value with a negative sign. So minus 2 will make it downwards like this. In a similar way, we can make cone with proper distances, for example 1 and let's just make it 1.5. And then we have the sphere, which is just a spherical shape. So I'll click at a point and now I'll add a radius of 2 and there we have it. We have the sphere. We have a pyramid shape. Now for making pyramid, well you just need to start with the base square. Now in this case, the base is touching exactly at this vertex. Now that's because of inscribed type of a square that we have. Here this square is made inside an imaginary circle where the circle is touching only the vertices but if you want to change that to circumscribed select circumscribed and now it will touch the midpoint instead of the vertices so you can just select whatever the base circle you want in this case the base circle is this one which is made inside this and AutoCAD will use this circle as a reference because it's prompting you to specify radius and not the side length so here let's just change it back to inscribed and now this will be the circle and the radius is let's say 2. There we are. Now you can specify the height or depth if you want. Then we have the wedge shape. Now wedge is well this. So you just need to specify this, I mean just a base rectangle and then it will move up or down along y axis. So you can just specify that height. And then finally we have the torus shape, the donut kind of shape. Here you just need to start with the base circle which is the central circle and then thickness of this torus. So whatever thickness you specify maybe 0.2 that will be the torus thickness. And that's how you can create primitives. Now as you can see for making these primitives you don't need a 2D sketch. But for all the other sketches that we will make next we need 2D sketches. So for that I'll go to this simple 3D tools. Now here I have already created some sketches. So now let's explore the simple solid modeling tools. Now these solid modeling tools are the building block of AutoCAD 3D and using these tools you can make any kind of drawing. Now on the modeling panel the very first tool that we have here is called extrude. Let's select this and now using this tool well you can give height to any 2D shape. Let me just click on home and now I'll zoom into this one, this drawing only. And if you notice this, you'll just find that this drawing is made with a circle, a rectangle and a line. So basically we just have two closed geometries, a rectangle and a circle. Now you can click on any closed geometry, press enter and then specify a height. For example, here I'll just click and there is a height. You can also change the visual style to see this thing clearly like this. Let's repeat it again. So I'll go to extrude, I'll select this enter and now I'll add a smaller height like this. So we've got two of these solid geometries. Now I'll press ctrl Z to get back to the original shape, home, zoom into this one. Now I'll change the visual style to shades of grey. Alright, now in this case it is extruding it completely in a solid way but you can change it. So I'll go to extrude, I'll select the circle and now I want it to extrude as a surface. We just want to extrude along the boundary but not as a solid. For that you can go to mode and you can select surface mode. And now the extrusion will happen along the surface like this. Now what we have here is a surface. You can do exactly the same using the surface tab. So on the surface tab we have the equivalent extrude tool. Here you can just select extrude and this will automatically extrude a surface even if your drawing is completely closed like this. Now let's press ctrl Z a couple of times. I'll go to home tab, extrude and if you extrude a single line or any open geometry it will by default extrude a surface. So for closed geometry it will extrude a solid but for open one it will automatically extrude a surface. Now let's go to extrude again and I'll go to mode and I'll change it back to solid. Alright, now let's select this circle and enter. 
all right there we are now in this case i'm going to change the angle with which this thing is tapered so that's this option taper angle now as you can see as i've changed the taper angle it will start tapering and you just need to specify an angle for tapering so i'm going to type 10 that's the taper angle and there we are now it is tilted to an angle of 10 degrees and you can specify a height again so you can just click or you can specify height using the command line so maybe let's add a height of 10 unit and there we are now it is tilted to an angle of 10 degrees that's the taper angle you can also add a negative taper angle for example extrude i'll select this enter and now i'll go to taper angle and i'll type minus 10 enter and now it will taper outside instead of tapering it inside so that's the extrude tool now we also have a tool here called press pull now press pull is similar but in this case you don't need a sketch it will extrude only the regions not the boundaries so for extrude we selected the boundary but for press pull you can click inside the boundary now as you can see this boundary is highlighted so it will extrude only this boundary so just click and there we are you can select this boundary and extrude it separately this boundary and maybe extrude it like this and that's called press pull now with press pull you can also select multiple boundaries for example i'll select press pull i'll select this boundary and then i want to select this region as well so i'll go to multiple and i'll select this region now we have two regions selected and you can even select more if you want but maybe let's just select this one too all right we've got these three press enter and now we have extruded these three regions so there we have it three simple press pulls now if you want to subtract any solid geometry then you can use press pull for that as well so i'll go to this circle and now i'll make a circle right on top of this now by default it will let me make that but if for whatever reason this kind of plane is not highlighting whenever you are selecting any geometry then that's because of an option from status bar so in this case i'm very easily able to make this circle right on top of this but if it's not working in your case just go to customization and select dynamic ucs this should be checked when it is checked autocad will show this kind of access system with a lightning icon just make sure it is checked here as well so it should be active and when active it will turn blue like this now you will be able to make your drawing on any surface so here also you can just make it and you can even make it on this surface so you just need to highlight the surface and you can make it if this is not active you won't be able to make it on any surface it will only make it on x and y and that's all because of the user coordinate system that works in autocad we'll talk about that in the upcoming videos so we have all of these circles now let's go to press pull i'll select the circle and now if i move it down it will create a hole if i move it up it's going to extrude it so maybe let's just click down and now we have this hole select here move it and now it extruded this so based on the direction where you are just moving it it will either cut or add geometry that's the press pull all right so before we move any further i have a quick message for you if you are enjoying this 3d tutorial series then i'm sure you'll love our video courses as well so on sourcecad we have video courses on autocad fusion 360 solidworks and lots of other software and if you want to have a look just click the link in the description of this video and explore our course library you can also start with a seven day free trial without any risks and if you start the trial you are also protected by a 30 day money back guarantee so there's a lot for you in sourcecad video library now back to the video now let's move to the next tool which is revolve so right underneath this we have revolve tool here select revolve and here we have a completely closed geometry now as you can see this is made with one single unit so if you have geometry which is made with several separate segments make sure it is closed and join into one unit now i'll select this and enter all right now we just need to specify an axis so i'll select this red line so first point second point and we have this so this is how it's going to revolve it will just revolve it right around that axis and if you press enter now the resulting shape will look like this that's revolve now i'll press ctrl z a couple of times to get back to this and i'll revolve it once again so i'll go to revolve select this enter now i'll select this green line as the axis 
And the shape which we are going to get now will be different. So it is just going to pull it up like this and revolve around green line. And this is what we are going to get. Now there is a gap here. And that's because of this green line or red line selection. But if I press Ctrl Z, and if I just select this line directly on the geometry, then there won't be a gap. So I'll go to revolve again, select the drawing, and I can select this axis or this, whichever you want. Maybe I'll select this one here, and now it will revolve like this without any gap. Now it is revolving to an angle of 360, which is just closing this completely. But if you want a gap, you can add an angle like 270 enter and now it will fill only three quarters and here you can see what's going on so this was the shape and it just revolved this shape about this line and kind of like this and the revolve angle is 270 degrees so three quarters are filled that's the revolve tool now let's talk about the sweep tool now for the sweep tool i'm just going to delete both of these geometries so that we have a clean drawing and the sweep tool is right here so with sweep you can sweep one geometry on another we need one close and one open geometry for sweep to work so here we have it we have open geometry which is a spline and also a polyline with these fillets and then we have two closed geometry a pentagon and a circle i'll select the circle enter now select this spline and here we are it will sweep it like this right along this path it's as easy as that Let's press Ctrl Z a couple of times and let's sweep it again. So sweep, I'll select the circle, enter. Now, here we have an option called scale. Let's change the scale and I'll add a scale of two, enter. Now, if I click close to this endpoint, the sweep will happen like this. It will start sweeping with the original circle from here as I click close to this endpoint. And by the time it reaches the second endpoint, the circle size will be twice as big because of the scale of two. So that's the non-uniform sweep. Let's press Ctrl Z again and let's select it. And here also you can select mode and select between solid and surface. So in case you want a hollow surface, just select surface. Now select the object, enter and select it. And now we have a completely hollow pipe kind of shape like this. Okay, let's sweep it along this path. And to do that, once again, I'll press Ctrl Z so that we are back to this. I'll go to sweep and I'll select the circle enter and this path and here we are now if you want to sweep your drawing with a twist value well you can do that as well let me show you what that is so i'll go to sweep i'll select this polygon enter and now here we have an option called twist select it and add a twist angle now this can be any angle and it can be even more than 360 degrees so let me just type 720 for now enter and i'll add this path and this will happen. So this will start twisting it along this path. So it is sweeping it, but it is also revolving this polygon right along this path. And by the time it reaches this end point, it should have revolved to a complete angle of 720 degrees. So that's the twist value. Now, finally, let's talk about the loft tool. So I'll go to loft and the loft tool is the most unique kind of tool. In this case, we need shapes like this. So here, 2D shapes are made on three different but parallel planes. Now, you don't need to make it on parallel planes, but I've made it just for simplicity. You just need to ensure that they are not on same plane like this. Now, I'll go to this drop down and I'll select loft. Now, we need to select the geometries. So first geometry, second one and third, and that's the loft. Press enter twice and this is what we have. Now this may not look very clear, so I'll change the visual style. So I'll go to this one and change it to shades of gray and I'll repeat it again. So loft, first, second, third, and now you can see the difference. So that's how you're going to get the shape. It will combine all the 2D geometries to make it. Press enter once and now we have some options here. So using these options, you can further modify this shape. Now if I press enter, you'll get this shape as the final one. But if you click this arrow, you can now select options like normal to all sections. And now we have this loft, which is normal to every single section. So here it is perpendicular to this profile. And here also it's perpendicular. If you change it to normal to start section, this is perpendicular right here, but not here or here. Here it's just following the profile. Normal to end section will make it perpendicular right here, but not here or here. Then we have normal to start and end section. So start and end are perpendicular, but not here. And then finally, we have a draft angle. Now, 
Using this draft angle, you can make very different kind of shapes. So once selected, click on these grips. These grips will highlight when you select draft angle. Just click. And now we have two handles. We have one handle, which is the influence handle. And second one is angle. So you can click on this handle to increase the influence amount of this curve. So here it's just increasing or decreasing it. So I'll just increase the influence only up to this point. And now I'm going to change the angle like so. So here you can just move it up down just like this to change the angle maybe i'll just move it like this now i'll select this and here also i'll just change the sphere of influence and maybe i'll just make it like this all right and then i'll change the angle so i'll just move it out just like this so with that we have got this kind of weird shape so we have just three sections and using this we have made this kind of shape now, once you're satisfied with the way this drawing looks, simply press enter and here's the final shape. That's loft. Of course, if you want to make it hollow, we have a tool for that as well, which we'll explore in a moment. So I'll press control Z a couple of times to get back to this. And finally, let me show you one more option related to loft. Whenever you are using loft, make sure that you are selecting your sketches in a proper order. For example, if I select this circle, then this circle and then this polygon the shape will be different so it will just follow your selection if i press enter twice i'm going to get this shape so depending on the lofting order the shape will differ and that's the loft tool so that was part one in the next part we will discuss the advanced 3d modeling tools so i'll see you in the next part